Welcome everybody and queue up artists to the basic walkthrough of the queue up arts California Keys contact library. I'm Michael Scott, co-designer and developer at queue up arts, and I'll be guiding you through this multi-series walkthrough of the basic features of California Keys. It's not intended to be a comprehensive in-depth review of the sounds, but more of a quick walkthrough of all the features. But links to the actual sounds will be provided later. So let's take a look. So today we're looking at the Hammond A100 organ. It is serial number 4444 from the 1960s stock. And there's no modifications. And it was serviced by Eden Block. Let's start with the A100's drawbar section. Our approach to this mighty Hammond was to produce a customized set of the most sought after, most commonly used, and best sounding drawbar settings. So you can quickly get to the business of recording, writing, gigging, and playing, and not get bogged down in a rabbit hole of endlessly tweaking drawbars you'll just never use. So when the owner of this beautiful A100, Arlen Oscar, a gigging full-time LA musician, said he only really used a handful of go-to settings, we listened up and had him dial in those settings. We then sampled them and saved each one for you on each of the draw bars here. So each H organ instrument contains four of those draw bar settings, one on each of these draw bars. And over here are the three different sets of sounds. Located in each of these presets are four different draw bar settings. So just think of each slider on our H organ as one Hammond. It's like getting four Hammonds in one instrument. A full Hammond on each controllable draw bar. Now we are going to add more comprehensive audio demos showcasing the sounds in later clips. As this series is just briefly showing the interface and what the knobs, faders, draw bars, and switches do. So let's take a quick look at the draw bar section. Among the many hidden features that you'll get with this organ is these draw bars are freewheeling. So as you're playing and you pull them out, you will not need to re-trigger them. They'll just begin to fire as you're playing and you pull them out. So I'm going to go through these one by one real quickly just to give you an overview. So this is an, a setting that Arlen Oscar uses in his gigs. This is a full set of draw bars that is known to be a quick and comprehensive preset for Arlen at his gigs, along with this one. Let me turn the other one down. Bring this one up. Bring the fourth one up. So these are the four settings in H organ O1 Lordish. Each of these draw bars is a full Hammond. Pretty nice. So let's continue through the draw bar area to the high pass section. And this is particularly important because you have full control over four Hammond organs, one on each of these draw bars. As you play the bass notes, they could get muddy. You may need to filter them down, take away some of that bass. This will cut that supersonic bass and mud. And you have full control over this slider. It fires continuously. You don't need to re-trigger your notes as you're playing. Super important in those gigs. And sliding on over here, we're going to take a look at the percussion section. First, I'm going to turn all of the individual Hammond draw bar presets off. And we're just going to have a listen to the percussion. This section right here, denoted by the slow, these are your seconds and third slow. So let's have a listen to that. Here's your third, or your thirds. And if you watch my keyboard playing down here, I'm just simply holding on the note continuously so that you can hear the envelope, how long it takes for these seconds and thirds to evolve or decay actually through their, their volume envelope. Let's move on over here to the fast section. That's the remaining two sliders here and here. These are, again are the seconds and thirds, but these are fast. 
So I'm basically playing the same note, holding it for the same length of time. And let's bring out the thirds on this. Move on back over to the slow seconds and thirds. So you have a lot of resources here to program sounds. You have a lot of different presets and sounds. And you can create just about any sound you can imagine with just these basic sliders right here in this section. It gets you right to the gigs, gets you right to playing instead of fooling around. endlessly on rows and rows of draw bars. So let's move over to the delay section here, have a quick look at this. Your amount knob is basically your overall volume, and is the case with all effects in the California Keys series, when it's fully counterclockwise, the effect is completely shut off and no CPU cycles are dedicated. So I'm going to leave the feedback knob here to about uh, 12 or 1 o'clock just so that we have something to work with. Let's move on over to the damping. What damping does is after each subsequent delay tap, the taps get darker and darker and more filtered over time. Let's have a listen. And let's have a listen to it completely turned off. Set that. And now I'm going to take you over to the panning knob, which you probably saw a little teaser there as I moved it. When you turn it all the way off, your delay is basically in mono. And as you move it on up, it starts to ping pong left and right with each tap. I'm going to reset the feedback here just so you can get a little bit more clearer view of that. And again, one more time. This is fully left and right. Very cool. As you move the time knob, the taps become faster in time or slower in time. And there's, there's a little bit of grunge as the knob is moved in real time. It's typically not something you do to a delay. But you can reset it. I'll reset it again. Take it down. And if you want a super long delay tap, I'm going to reset that. This will delay almost infinitely. There is some degradation over time. If you let it run for a few minutes, it will uh, begin to degrade over time. But really nice, fat, usable delay for this organ. I'm going to reset this. And then we'll move on over to the vibrato section here. It's simply one knob. And as is the case on the actual A100, we have the markings around the knob itself. So the way they're laid out in the A100 is slightly different than this, but we got as close as we could within the screen real estate, the space that we had on the overall screen. So this is a vibrato one, then chorus one, then vibrato two, then chorus two, and then the final vibrato and chorus as you click all the way over here. Let's have a listen to these. These were modeled directly from the A100's vibrato section. This is vibrato one. As you move over here, it gets a little deeper, and, and now we're into a chorus one. I'll take this feedback down. And now let's move on over to Vibrato 2. So back in the day, when these guys didn't have the money for a Leslie, they would use this on your um, 
on your soap operas and game shows and baseball parks and things. Moving on up. And this is the exact uh, rotational speed and vibrato speed that is in the A100. It's it's indigenous and original to that organ. A little deeper. Now we're a little bit more into chorusing. And here, the, the final throw. It maxes out in this position right here. It can go no further. And this is vibrato and chorus together. And once again, we will rotate it cut fully counterclockwise. It's very, very close to the A100, if not identical. So let's move on over to the phaser. We'll take the vibrato down. And this phaser is slightly different than the other California Key Series in that you have an adjustment for the speed of the phaser. So here is your amount. This is what would be equivalent to your volume or amount or level of the phaser. Again, when it's fully counterclockwise, it shuts off completely. So you can hear a turn on right there. We'll bring it up to about three quarters. Now we'll move the speed. This is something that's kind of cool. The, uh, the Hammond guys love to play with. So let's have a listen to the cabinets. What it means by cabinets is speaker cabinets. And it is really, really, really nice emulation of a speaker cabinet. What you have here is the size of the cabinet. You want to preset these before you go. This is not something necessarily you want to move on the fly while it's playing. Because there is a bit of a delay as it calls up the, the impulse. So you have your closer cabinets, your smaller cabinets are here. is the distance between the cabinet and the microphone. So if you notice it, it feels a little more closer and tighter. The air interacts with this cabinet size directly. So you need to play with these two. They, they counter interact. So as the air knob is turned fully counterclockwise, the microphone is very close to the cabinet. As it's moved fully clockwise, it gets further away. I'm going to move this while I'm playing. So basically, it's a little drier and counterclockwise, and it's a little bit more airy, as the name implies, or distant as you go clockwise. You got bass and treble to really make this cabinet. So this could also be considered a tone, somewhat of a tone section for your organ right here, but they interplay with the cabinet size. So now what I want to do is Check out the mighty tube overdrive here. Have a listen to this. A little bit goes a long way. It's a vintage tube overdrive. What this tame knob does is it takes the sizzle it takes the crackle or the really super high-end distortion away in case you're having an issue with that or you want to warm it up a little bit.
range of sounds with this. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit and I'm going to move us on down to the Leslie. Man, you can you can really hear the rotation of those horns. What your distance knob does is basically the microphone or the distance from the Leslie cabinet. A little closer here is counterclockwise. A slightly different phase shift as you move it fully clockwise. Your low high is your relationship to the low horn and the high horn. So this is this is more of your lower horn and of course your higher horn and now I'm going to step on the pedal I've assigned the pedal to the slow fast switch So now you're probably wondering about the speed at which this Leslie horn rotates up or speeds up and um, speeds back down. And that brings me to the thumb screws right here, the fast and slow acceleration. So this is, this is your fast acceleration basically when you're going from this top one here, when you're going from the slowest speed to the fastest speed. And I'm going to set this fully counterclockwise to show its slowest rotation up to the fastest speed. And there you can hear it gets up there pretty slowly. So let's turn it up all the way to nearly instantaneously. So as I switch between slow and then go to the fast, it's it's almost instant. From slow to fast again. Turn it down to a more neutral setting. So let's check out the other direction. Let's go from fast to slow, and we're going to turn this all the way fully counterclockwise so that when you're going from fast to slow, the slow rotation takes longer or quite a bit longer to get to its speed. So we'll start off in the fast mode. And I'm going to let go now. So let's try it again, going a little faster. So what you just heard, it went from the fastest to the slowest setting nearly instantaneously. One more time, we'll start off on the fast and let go. Okay, so let's turn the Leslie down and move right on over to the reverb section here. The reverb is basically divided into three sections, spring, plate, and hall. So let's have a listen to the spring. Nice vintage spring reverb from back in the day. As you step through these, they don't just get longer, they also add a little bit of complexity. Move on to the plate. These are Lexicon 480L plates and halls.
They're really, really nice. These plates and hauls are really, really special. So let's take a look at the last setting, which is the effects dry and wet button. This button will kill every effect that's in the A100. And it's really useful if you're at a gig, you're in your session, and typical musician scenario is you've turned everything up, everything is just going, it's too loud, things are starting to get muddy, things are starting to get a little too crazy, and you just need to kill so you can either play a riff or diagnose a problem, and you've got things turned up to the point where... <laughs> You have distortion and you kill it with one button or one effects wet dry switch. I'm going to take these back down a little bit here so it's not so extremely distorted. And show you one last time. A little bit of distortion. What's happening here? And you just hit the kill switch. The setting is savable. So your kill state, everything that you've got here is savable. So if you have something in the middle of a song where the effects do get completely killed, you can save this as either a preset or during the actual saving of the preset itself between the effect kill, the dry, and the wet. And so there you have the QUP Arts H organ A100.